Also, as I mentioned, big this week, the UFC 158 tickets go on sale. The big press conference in Montreal, in frigid Montreal, and one of the big fights on that card pits Carlos Condit versus Roy McDonald. It's the rematch, the much-anticipated rematch, and we've got the natural-born killer on the line right now on the MMA Hour. Carlos, how are you? I'm doing well, Ariel. How are you? I'm doing great. Great to have you on the show. Is this the fight that you wanted next when, when you were thinking about what's next for you post-GSP? Was Rory McDonald the guy that came to mind? Um, you know, not, not right off the top of my head, but when, when the opportunity arose, um, you know, it, everything got kind of just fell in line, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a great fight. I'm excited. Were you watching UFC on Fox 5 when he fought against BJ Penn? Uh, yeah, I was. What do you think of his performance? Uh, he looked looked really good, man. Looked really good. Um, his uh, stand ups come a long way. Um, you know, he's he's uh, you know uh, kind of developed a, a lot of a lot of new weapons, and no, uh, he, he looked great. I like the way he went to the body. I thought I thought he really developed that very nicely. He's really turned into a much better striker than the guy you fought at UFC 115. Would you agree? Uh, yeah, um, I think uh, more versatile. He's just he has he has more tools in his in his tool belt. What did you think of his call out? You know, Joe Rogan asked him a question about the fight. He ignored it and went straight to you. You're sitting there watching it. What do you think of it? Um, I I kind of I I had a feeling he was going to do that. Um, you know, I know that you know it that his his loss to me you know wasn't sitting well with him and. Uh, um, you know, I, I, I was excited, man. Um, you know, like I said, it's, it's a great fight. I think, uh, you know, we're going to put on a, a, a hell of an entertaining fight. Um, so yeah, it was, <laughs> it was, uh, it, it was definitely, um, you know, what I wanted to hear. The evolution of the Roy McDonald character, in my opinion, one of the stories of 2012 from his his new attire to his demeanor, his interviews and whatnot. And I know you've noticed this as well. Don't think I didn't notice. You're tweeting out lines from American Psycho um, that we that we talked about earlier. So you, you've noticed this. What do you think? Is he interesting or is he just weird? Uh, well, I think it's a fine line, right? <laughs> um, uh, you know, I don't know, man. You know, he's 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 a young guy, man. He's, I guess, you know, I'm trying to f- figure out who who he is. I think we all go through that. Um, you know, what I, you know, that's kind of, I don't know. I don't really, I don't really pay too too much mind to that. You know, my my concern is, you know, the the guy, the fighter that I'm meeting in the cage. When you tweeted, I can't believe Bryce prefers Van Pan's card to mine. I'm so embarrassed and humiliated. What were you trying to say? I, I just kind of a li- little bit of a joke, man. Um, just trying to make light, you know. He's he's pretty uh, pretty serious, and you know, with his he's gonna embarrass and humiliate and yeah, you know, and all this negativity. I was just trying to trying to lighten up the mood a little bit. He he uses very strong like when he talks about BJ, when he talks about you, he wants you to feel the embarrassment that 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 he felt when you be. He, like, he uses when he talks. You don't just get the sense that he's hyping a fight. Like you get the sense that he thinks about this and is in a room and is has pictures of you on the wall and he really wants to annihilate you. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> and I've, you know, I've kind of, I've, I felt that vibe being around him. Uh, you know, kind of over the over the past couple of years too. Do you think that this is an act or do you think it's all legit? Um, I think it's pretty legit, man. Um, yeah, I, I think it's I think he's genuine. Have you have you ever had your hands wrapped while wearing a suit? Have I ever had my hands wrapped while wearing a suit? Nope, I can't say that I have. <laughs> Did you see that when he, when they were showing him in the locker room getting his hands wrapped and he was wearing a very nice suit at the same time? Did you notice that? No, I didn't. I I, I missed that. <laughs> oh well, you should go back and look at it on the tape. It was quite the moment. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> now, how do you feel about fighting in Montreal again? Second fight in a row. Um, you know, I, I, I kind of have mixed feelings. Uh, I would have liked to have fought uh, closer to home, you know, may, maybe Vegas. Uh, but, you know, I, I loved fighting in, in Montreal, um, you know, in, in November. The fans were awesome. Um, you know, it was, it was, you know, it's a great fight town. Um, so, you know, they, I, I asked for I asked for the fight to be in Vegas. Um, they said that they'd rather have it in uh, in Montreal. Um, so, 
I, I got over, I got over, uh, you know, my my request being denied pretty quick, and you know, kind of moved on to, uh, you know, how, how I'm going to win this. As you know, Carlos, there are times when guys, even in defeat, their stock rises. And that's the sense that I got from you with how you handled the loss, with the, the performance you put on, you know, the head kick, all that stuff. Like, no one even talks about UFC 143 and how the fans kind of turned on you after that fight. Is that the sense that you're getting? I know you're active online and whatnot, for the most part. Do you get the sense that your stock rose in the eyes of the fans after your fight against GSP? Well, you know, I, I think people people like to see exciting fights. Um, the fight with me and George was was you know was exciting. Um, you know, kind of had a you know showed a lot of different aspects of the game. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I I definitely got a lot of love uh, a lot of love from the fans. This is the first time I talked to you after that fight, at least removed. You know, not on fight night. How many times have you watched it? I've only watched it once, man. Oh, really? Only, only watched it, watched it once. Yeah, I watched it right when I got home, and you know, I'm still, I'm still disappointed. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm moving on. You know, I got, I have, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the future, and you know what I have in front of me. But you know, it's still, still disappointing. You know, I may, you know, in, in, in training for this, for this fight, I'll probably go back and, um, you know, see, see where, you know, what, where I could improve, but. Yeah, so far I've only watched it once. How how long does it officially take for you to feel like okay, I'm I'm over this and I'm looking to the future? You know, how many days, weeks does that take? Um, you know, for me it was it was pretty quick. Um, you know, there's disappointment, of course, but you know I put that in the back of my mind, um, and you know that I can't I can't uh, can't change it. You know, all I can do is learn from it and uh, and move forward and. You know, look to you know look to come back with a vengeance. How close do you think you were to finishing him with that head kick in the third? Uh, yeah, pr- pretty close. Um, you know, he, he recovered pretty quick. You know, it had had the had the kick been just just a little bit lower, I think uh, I would have. Uh, you know, he would have he would have been uh, dazed more. Yeah, I would have been been a lot closer to a knockout. Um, George's, you know, he's got a lot of heart. You know, that people. People say that he, he he has no heart, and I you know I, I disagree with that. And I you know you can you can see in that in that instance that you know he he, he wanted to he wanted to win, and uh, you know he came back well. Main event on that card is obviously George St. Pierre versus Nick Diaz. Nick Diaz last loss to you. Did they make the right call by putting that fight together and not giving Johnny Hendricks the the, the fight against GSP? Um, Hendricks deserved the, the title shot without a doubt. Um, but you know, UFC is a business, and uh, the fight with uh, with with uh, GSP and Nick Diaz is going to sell a hell of a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of pay per views and get get people very very excited. You know, so you know, I guess there's two different ways to look at it. You know, uh, I, I I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel feel bad for for Hendr- Hendricks. I think he he definitely deserves the shot, but um, you know, it is what it is. There's a press conference in Montreal on Wednesday to kick off ticket sales and whatnot. GSP and Nick have to be there. You're obviously linked to this story. Do you think Nick shows up? <laughs> uh, I, you never know, man. You never know. <laughs> I, I, I think I think he will. I think I think his you know his people will will go out of their way, go above and beyond to get to get him on the plane. You fought them both. Who do you think wins? Um. I, you know, I, I'm going to go with George. Um, you know, George, you know, when, when he fought me, he was, he was coming off a long layoff. Um, I think he's probably going to be, be sharper in his next fight. Um, so I, I, I got GSP, but, you know, I wouldn't count Diaz out. He's got some, uh, you know, he's just a very unorthodox style. And, you know, he, he may be able to use that to his advantage and, and, uh, and you know, pull, pull it off, pull off the upset. Final thing, I know training camp just started. I saw on your Facebook you got some great uh, pictures up there, and I saw a lot of people commenting on your weight, your face and whatnot. How much do you weigh right now? Uh, <laughs> Unbelievable, I, I these didn't fans. Read any of those, I didn't read any of those comments oh. where they, they called me fat or what. A little bit. They were saying, wow, what's uh, going on? They, they were worried you weren't going to make weight in the fights in uh, two and a half months. Uh, yeah, well, having, having the holidays right after <laughs> a hard weight cut maybe isn't the isn't the, the, the best idea, but no, I, you know, I'm only, I'm probably way around one, 190, uh, just above 190. 
Final thing, how do you beat Roy McDonald on the 16th of March? Um, I got to... I, I gotta, I gotta be better than I was in the last fight, and you know, I, uh, you know, he, he's coming in this fight with a, a lot of, a lot of emotion, a mm. lot of anger, and I really feel like I'm gonna be able to use that to, to my advantage. Mm, very interesting. I'm sure we'll talk to you before then. Great to talk to you as always, Carlos. Good luck in training, and we'll see you in Montreal in March. All right, man. Take it easy. There he is, the natural born killer himself, Carlos Condit. Going up against Rory McDonald, as I mentioned, tickets go on sale this week, January 26th, um, to the general public, between $600 and $85. I think that one sells out in Montreal. I think GSP versus Diaz, as he mentioned, uh, is a huge fight for that market. I think if promoted correctly, if... I think the Benson Henderson versus Nate Diaz fight hurts it a little bit because Benson beat Nate so convincingly. Obviously, they're different fighters. I don't sense right now, and I know we're a ways away, and there's like still seven or so UFCs between now and then. I don't get the sense that the fans are as amped for it, but I think starting with Wednesday with the press conference, which I expect Nick to show up to and beyond, I think fans will get very excited. I love what Carlos said about the emotion that Rory has been showing as of late. Rory doesn't strike me as the kind of guy who uses that against him, who allows himself to fall into that kind of trap, but there's no doubt about it. This is a very personal fight for Rory McDonald, not as personal for Carlos Condit. Carlos Condit beat him. He, uh, he snatched a victory away from Rory McDonald back at UFC 115. Rory was a completely different person, different look, different demeanor. Fighting, you know, still in his hometown, or at least his home province of British Columbia, has since moved to Montreal, and now he is a completely different person. It's a great card. Johnny Hendricks also on the card going up against uh, uh, Jake Ellenberger. Jordan Meehan making his UFC debut on that card. Nick Ring versus Chris Camozzi, Patrick Cote versus Bobby Volker, Dan Miller, Jordan Meehan, Sean Pearson, Rick Story, a very underrated fight, and John McDessey versus Darren Cruikshank. That should be a, a clinic as far as striking is concerned. Watch out for the kicks there. And uh, Yves Jabouin versus Johnny Eduardo. That has been announced thus far for UFC 158. And most importantly, I get to go back home. And that's very exciting for me always.